Hey there, YouTube. It's me, Broken Terrain, and I've got a fantastic video for you today. It's a gate for my magnetic modular palisades. I can't wait. Super playable. Super awesome. Come along. I'm going to show you how I do it right after the drop. For this project, I drew up a little schematic in my sketchbook there and grabbed a pack of random sized doweling, lots of large ones and smaller ones, and I got to work. The gate's going to be six inches tall. This package of doweling just happens to be 12 inches, so I'm cutting everything in half, and this is going to work out really well for me in the long run because both sides are going to be fairly balanced and symmetrical. These large dowlings really tested my hand strength and uh, a lot of them I ended up uh, having to score the edges and then just snapping. Once I had the whole bag all cut, I had a couple left over. I laid them across the checkers on my cut mat, each one being an inch. I got a look at how many uh, were needed for the distance I was looking for and I separated them into piles and then I separated those piles into sections and then for the middle section I cut a half inch off the top and I'm using my rasp here to give these pieces a great wooden texture. Then with a sharp utility knife, you're gonna give all of the tips a nice carve and be nice and rough with these big gouges. It really makes it look like hand hewn logs, which is what we're going for. Then you'll use the same technique for the bits going across the gate. Then I sketched out the dimensions down on some parchment paper, taped some craft sticks in place, and then with white PVA glue, I glue down the dowels in the order I've got them set up so that we've got that crenellation across the top. And I just wanna take a minute to say thank you to everybody. Thanks for subscribing, uh, hitting that play button and giving it a view, I appreciate it. If you liked the video, please hit like uh, hit subscribe so you can get more of the same and uh, and always leave a comment. I love to hear from you. Thank you so much With the frame of the gate done, it's time to turn to the gate itself With uh, for that I'm gonna turn to my craft sticks. I've also heavily textured these with the rasp and I'm getting really excited about the project, so I don't want to wait for white PVA glue. I'm using super glue. I run it across the frame and then pinch it, uh, pinch it down real quick with some super glue accelerant. And I will do this with both doors. You can see I've got a, a stencil on the parchment, uh, very similar to what I was doing with the, uh, the frame of the gate the palisade itself and I find that to be an incredibly useful technique. I'm going into detail on this particular door, this is the one with the small guard door or a wicket that I uh, discovered thanks to a friend. Thank you Mad Dog, appreciate it. Trim off the excess with your snips and do something similar with the other door. For some reason, I thought I'd just be able to attach it to the gate as is. That was silly. Uh, in hindsight, I actually need to frame the door out, which makes perfect sense. Of course you do. So I start by cutting a craft stick to size, gluing it across the top, filling out the corners with two match sticks trimmed to size, angled at the ends, and put in with white PVA glue. I'll leave this overnight to dry. The weak par uh, part on this was this frame here, and these uh, this bits of frame really, really uh, 
cement this thing together. So it was a good move. With the frame dry, I lay the gates down and uh, take a look at the size, make any modifications. I did need to sand one of the doors down and uh, uh, I did work at it for a little while, but I really wanted that wicket door, uh, the small door, and so it was worth it. I believe one door is ever so slightly larger than the other, but uh, unnoticeable. Some wood bracing against the small door. Trim off the excess. So I did a little experiment, tried to make my own hinges, it worked. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> so I end up going to Hobby Lobby, picking up some small hinges and using those instead. It's a bit more sturdy. Um, it doesn't look good either, but I prefer the hinge that I know is going to outlast the craft. So awesome. Then it was time to get the larger gate uh, framed in, a couple more craft sticks, and some matchsticks and white PVA glue to get the frame on the gate and get it ready to apply hinges. Oh man, at this, at this point in the project, I'm so nervous and scared. This thing is turning out amazing. I mean, I'm so pumped. And if I mess this up, all this hard work, could be right in the scrap. So I use some dowels. I try and get the level just right for the gates versus the uh, the palisade part. Eventually I, I get comfortable with it. A little super glue, some accelerant, and the doors are in. And I am freaking excited. I'm pumped. YouTube, do you love it? Come on, smash like if you love it. Time to get it based. I grab some thick chipboard, sketch out where I want that hot glue, put it down along the edges. I don't want any hot glue in the middle. Those gates have a certain amount of clearance and I need to keep that in mind. Brace the edges with more hot glue, put a couple fender washers down, coat them in hot glue for texture. Here's a couple shots of how we're looking, and in one of them I've got the figure for scale. Boy, I'm super excited about that tiny little wicket door. Hell yes. Don't forget, this is an extension of my already existing modular magnetic palisade. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's going to let you do an entire setup, an entire palisade encampment and I'm in love with it, and I think you will be too. Using the magnets from the wall sections, I make sure I have my polarities correct, and then embed those magnets in a little goop of super glue there. There we go, looking good. Uh, you'll get a better explanation on how to do it in the other video. Then I go in and I start attaching my supports. I want that sidewalk, or that walkway, sidewalk, that walkway <laughs> to match the gate. And then I want a way for them to get up above the gate on the higher walkway. So I use the matchsticks to bridge the gap for the smaller walkway. And then I have to turn to my craft sticks there to reach all the way up to the top. At this point, uh, I'm a little impatient, so a lot of super glue, a lot of super glue accelerant. And then when I can lay the pieces out, mainly the walkway pieces themselves, I use the white PVA. It's gonna create a stronger, uh, a stronger bond between these wooden pieces. Then you just have to trim off the excess and admire your handiwork. I do a couple little locking mechanisms that I'm, I guarantee will be broken many, many times over the uh, use of this door, but I made them anyway. Uh, you can bar the door 
uh, and bar the smaller door. And then I quickly glued up some ladders, attached those to the side, allowing people to get from the walkway to the very, very top of the palisade. Time to decorate the gate with some iron strapping and iron bolts. I'm gonna do this by cutting strips of thick uh, chipboard and using these little rhinestones. They're bright and shiny right now, but with some paint covering them, they will look like hammered iron uh, bolts and uh, it'll look good. I'm gonna flock the uh, outside edges of the gate with white PVA and craft sand staying away from the center to keep the clearance for the doors. Then I'm going to make a couple of lanterns using some beads, jewelry pieces, and those wire hangers. A little uh, cut piece of chip with some nail holes poked into it. And then I'm going to glue the jewelry piece straight through and I'm a little pr uh, proud of this next bit I drill into the wood where I'm going to be gluing the lantern on and this is actually going to allow the lantern peg to actually sink into a, the one of the thickest pieces of dowel on the piece so what would normally be a very weak point for the craft is actually going to have a lot of strength behind it see a couple of beauty shots oh man oh she's sexy I like it after I uh, coat the whole thing with half black half matte Mod Podge I go back with my Mississippi mud color the ground I use folk arts uh, gunmetal gray hit the strapping hit the lanterns the lantern backing all the little uh, studs and I've placed a few of them on the back and along that little uh, wicket door and then I hit the whole thing with a horrible homemade brown wash I need to have the missus make me more wash I don't know how she does it but this stuff is awful uh, it did it did have the effect I wanted it to um, it doesn't quite match the other set, but boy, it's close enough. And you already notice it above the wall sections. No harm, no foul. I'm still in love with it. I go back in with a vanilla ice cream, dry brush all the wood. All that texture that I put in with that rasp pays off big time here. More white PVA. Then I'm going to go back in with that uh, grass flock, hit the, uh, hit the front, hit the two sides, and I'm still going to leave this middle part blank. I'm leaving that blank for some craft sand. It's made to uh, lay out road, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to open that package up and get some use out of it. I'm going to try and experiment a little yellow glow-in-the-dark paint a little bright yellow I'm gonna mix the two together and hit my lanterns up uh, just kind of flood the area and then I wipe the excess off the raised area with my finger kind of like a reverse dry brush now because of all the glue down that center area it uh, started to warp the base uh, when glue dries it pulls and so in order to compensate, I lay down some glue on the other side and let that glue dry and pull the base back. This was enough to give me the clearance I wanted. I mixed up some water and some glue and oh, <laughs> uh, I made a huge mess. Um, had quite the cleanup and had to make more glue water. <laughs> but I used the glue water there 50% maybe 75, 25, and just dabbed it all over the flock and the gravel flock. Uh, it worked amazingly. Here you can see the gate with the rest of the modular set. Um, I'm simply in love with this project, and I think uh, it would make a great addition to your terrain at home. So give it a shot.
like, subscribe, and we're going to get back to Tinley and the Shamrock Boys right after this. Thank you so much. The Shamrock Boys have ridden hard, and they've come smack dab into a closed gate, screeching the cart to a halt. On the ramparts, they see orcs. Oh shucks, Captain, they ain't gonna let us in. Uh, is this big evil you speak of, shaman? This is not, and you know it. Please! She's hurt! We're being chased! You must let us in! I don't know if I want to go in, Captain. My chief, you must open the gate. The spirits have spoken to me. I am not so sure, Shaman. I respect the spirits, but I respect strength more. The spirits, the ancients have fled the grove. We must discover why. Open the gate, my chief. <sighs> no. Beg for mercy, man things. <laughs> the ground began to shake as the corrupted forest spirit closed the distance on the Shamrock Boys. Oh, gods, here it comes. I see it, I see it. Shoot, get ready. Get ready, boys. And as the Shamrock Boys braced for impact, the captain choked back tears. I never even got the chance to tell her. It was too late. The beast was on him, and with a roar and a mighty hand, it rent the wagon into the air, sending the Shamrock Boys flying. The captain quickly cradled Tinley in his arms, and he alone rolled to his feet. The others didn't move. He smiled, gave them all a wink. Don't worry, boys. I think I can take him. <laughs> Funny man thing. Brave, but stupid. <laughs> With incredible speed, the beast rushed toward the captain. His sword and dagger drawn, he spun to the side and delivered a blow to the beast's haunches. It hollers in pain, turns and quickly swipes at the captain, sending him flying. <laughs> he rolls to his feet and clutches his side. A broken rib? <laughs> Impressive man thing! Fight on! <laughs> the captain charges towards the beast. Unfazed, the beast charges back at the captain, and the captain dodges to the side as a large clawed hand just barely misses him. Before the captain can turn, the beast is on him again, charging, slamming him against the gate. Oh, the wind knocks from the captain's lungs. This human is impressive. Oh, yes, very impressive. Silence! I will tell you what is impressive. The captain catches the second wind and pushes forward, slashing with his blade. But the beast is too fast, slamming him back against the gate. He collapses. Ah, impressive. <laughs> I think no. He looks strong to me. Uh, he moved fast for human. The beast charged at the captain and just began to tear into him against the gate. Like a cat with a mouse, it bats the captain against the wall. There, uh, it is done. No one could survive. <laughs> Weak little man, not worth my time. <laughs> what? But the captain rose to his feet, blood coming from his mouth. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Impressive. All right, you may save them. 
and the orcs manning the scorpions let loose the bolts. Poom! Poom! Slamming into the corrupted forest spirit. Foom! Foom! With each shot, it roars, being pushed backwards. The orc archers let loose a rain of death, and the corrupted spirit falls. The captain wipes blood from his eyes. I knew I could take him. And then he collapses. <laughs> there you are, shaman. You human pets. <laughs> Things don't look good for Tinley and the Shamrock Boys. To find out what happens next, you gotta watch my next video. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Remember, hit that subscribe button. Smash that like button. Throw a comment in the comment section. And as always, like each other, love each other, and craft on.